and welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. Do you remember Besiege, the Lego murder death contraption maker? Well, it just got multiplayer, and that's a really good thing. And Steam is no longer accepting bitcoins, which might lead you to say to yourself, wait a minute, Steam accepted bitcoins? Steam also will let you tell devs that you want Linux ports of their games. And they probably still won't listen. And Darkest Dungeon has some new DLCs. Uh, we'll see you guys. <laughs> Curators Connect and Valve automate another bit of Steam. And another emulator looks at Vulcan and says, Yeah, I want me some of that. Mm-mm-mm. Is everyone doing this fine Saturday evening? Coming to you live, I'm Vince Stone here at LGC thing. Actual, broadcasting from Athens, switching the bits with nothing but penguin sauce, which is kinky as it sounds. And for one more week in Finlandia, that is Master Sveng. What, what time is it? Is it still four o'clock in the morning? Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. 5.30 I'm, more I'm, like. I'm, I'm, yeah, it, it, it fucking sucks. <laughs> And the man from the island in Britannia. One Pedro Mateus, you know him, you love him. Hello. We also hang out on Wednesdays when we do our Wednesday show, which is uh, kind of like this, except nothing like this at all. It's, uh, yeah, something like that. And together. It's a thing. <laughs> with your business, helping us form that chat room dynamic in Discord and in IRC. That last, most special bit. Known as Cocaine Voltron. See, I forgot to enable suggestions. Um, and Empty's telling me that I need to do it, even though he could do it for me and be super cool. Uh, so, Jordan, what were you up to this week as I look for the little coat? Well, um, I, I once again injured my back, so I'm sitting on an ice pack right now in horrible, excruciating pain that's shooting down my legs. Also, was going to stream some Pyre this week, ran into some issues, worked with Flipit to get that resolved, uh, found a little bug with OpenTK in newer versions of SDL for 207, so that was neat, um, and yeah, that, that, that's, that's about it. Oh, I got, I got, I got, I got Mountain Dew, <laughs> and ow, I got, I got Mountain Doritos. Mountain Dew and ow, show title. I'm feeling yellow swag tonight. <laughs> Mountain Dew and ow. <laughs> Well, over here, I actually forgot my prop. Hold on a minute. There we go. TFX power supply that's going into the uh, Xbox 360 case. Uh, when I, you know, this is my long term project to actually build a PC inside that thing. At first, I thought, you know, let's do a file server or something like that. But then people started saying, oh, that'd be awesome as a Steam box. That'd be awesome as a Steam box. Well, if I can get a mini ITX motherboard on the cheap, I I might. Hmm. We'll see. I don't know, man. Certainly not like he has a fat government salary. Right. I mean, milking off the NHS, (laughs) man. That's all I'm hearing. (laughs) That's definitely a thing. It's kind of brilliant. One thing that we have definitely milked each and every single week is a horse. Oh, I thought you, I thought you were going to tell us your cooling story, but uh, yeah, the hor- the horse could also stand to cool down. It's running a little hot. It's the steam. Linux. Okay. Yep. So, uh, if you are uh, one of those people on Steam who happens to follow a certain curator page, maybe by a certain Linux gaming podcast that you've never heard of, well, uh. There will be some changes incoming. Uh, we already see them on our end. Uh, namely, I only realized this was a thing because I got an email saying, you have two games waiting on your Curator Connect wait list. Oh, oh, okay. So I had a little look at it, and yep, uh, what you're seeing now is actually the old format of the Curator page. It's got all the games. It's got the latest game we recommend at the top. And you got the full list all the way down. But uh, come future, uh, it will actually have each curator page will have multiple pages. And one of them will be the about page where you can have your little spiel. 
and there's an extra page that only the people who own the curator group can see, which is the admin page, and that actually brings some pretty little graphs. Yes, uh, so you can actually see how many views you've influenced over the past however many months, and you can even get a per-game breakdown of all the views you've influenced for a specific game. And apparently, Kona Co is... Kona, um, man. Seriously? The, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the Kona devs should be very thankful to us, because apparently we influenced 150 views. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, I mean, they're uh, French Canadian, uh, so they probably arrogant. will just give us the finger. Well, you never know, man. <laughs> Th this is pretty interesting. Um, ever since it's lit up, Pedro, uh, we've received keys already. So three games. Yeah, we received uh, one key for three different games, and that's actually one of the things I was surprised with this update because. When we first talked about it a while back, when Val first announced it, I thought, yeah, this is probably, they're just going to let people send one key, and that's it. Mm -hmm. No, you can send multiple keys. It actually tells you how many copies of the, of the game the developer sent you. And we have three games on our queue right now with one copy each. So, yeah, we're going to have to... Put blink tags on the like put some blink tags, but the whole reason this rolled three. out is a hundred percent good because it helps cut the key scammers out. Which, uh, mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. you're wondering, mm -hmm. uh, what do you mean? Why would people ever do that to get free keys? They just want free games. It's like, no, just go to g2a.com, that's where they end up, and uh, this allows them to do it directly. and I say good. It's a good thing. It keeps it in the Steam ecosystem and they don't have to... I mean, it makes it easier on developers, too. Because you, know, you don't have to deal with the email or anything like that. Just like, boop, boop, boop. There you go. Bob is, in fact, your uncle. Do you have any thoughts on this, Jay, baby? I mean, do the... Uh, one, one question I have is, do the actual devs have access to some of the um, curator numbers themselves so they can attempt to target... Um, target who they're given their review keys to that would also kind of be interesting to know um otherwise i think it's yeah it's not a terrible idea hmm? um and yeah may, maybe we'll actually get some yeah. use of that it remains to page. be seen it remains to be seen on steam exactly how the community will find a way to exploit this because this is another automated system that valve has implemented on steam and it's just ripe for abuse could be okay big yeah. announcement Big, Spe big speaking, announcement. Speaking of abuse, yes, Valve is releasing a new game. It's a new Portal. No, it's just Bridge Constructor Portal Edition. Uh, if you don't know what Bridge Constructor is, it's one of those physics sandbox games where you build bridges and you try and drive trucks across them and terrible stuff happens in the interim. Uh, this is a, a new version of the game developed in conjunction with Valve that introduces portally mechanics into this game. Uh, there's, there's a little, there's a little trailer here. Uh, we don't, we don't know too much about it just yet, other than there will be portals and bridges and trucks. Uh, hopefully that it's, mm -hmm. uh, hopefully it's a little more than just bridge constructor with the added fuckery of portals and physics manipulation. Otherwise it's going to be a pretty damn hard sell. I completely agree with you on that because I, I watched the entire trailer and um, that trailer does not make a bit of FSM damn sense. It's like, um, there's, there's truck and there's turrets question mark, uh, go buy it. But this so is it's, a, it's, it's basically the U S Canada border. The, um, one thing to point out though, it, <laughs> correct me if I'm right. Th this isn't coming directly from valve. This is a uh, licensed, right? I believe I believe it's Co developed. Uh, uh, that's what the article says. Licensed expansion uh, almost counts as Valve's first new yeah. game. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, well, we're, 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 we're still waiting on what was it? Was it like archetype or whatever? Whatever the hell the uh, Valve card game is. You got the that's card game. That's going to be their official new game. And I, I guess it makes sense because Valve sure as hell would allow them to do an expansion to something like that because they're never going to put a fucking three on anything that they've made. <laughs> they're just going to release a game that's just called three, 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 three. It's going to be like a reskin of VVVV. Man, you know what? I wouldn't people. be surprised if they just went ahead and released Left 4 Dead 4. 
at this point. Like it, like it, like I said, <laughs> the the most brilliant troll that they could do is just release Half Life Four that ends immediately after the massive cliffhanger at the end of Half Life Three, where shit just goes completely whack. G Man is dead, or like better yet, G Man is the main playable character or some shit. Um, he plays G Man. <laughs> yeah. You, Oh, the, the point of the game is just to like get to weird locations and stand still. No, like, no, it's, it, I got it. It's Half Life VR, except you're where you can't move around with the HTC. You just teleported into where G Man is throughout half, the Half Life One and Two series, and you can just watch Gordon go by, and people will fucking buy it. That's the fucked up part. <laughs> well, if if they use if you know what that would be, I would buy that if they use like the Freeman's Mind playthrough and just like a bunch of Freeman's Mind shit in there. That is true. <laughs> so, um, I'd, I'd buy the fuck out of that. Bitcoin, no good here. Steam has stopped accepting your cryptocurrency. So, uh, yeah, twenty dollars transactions and quickly changing valuation make the currency untenable. Um, here we go. You know, my my first like knee jerk reaction to this is, oh man, you know, Valve was just jelly about somebody else getting a cut and making money. Like, oh, oh we don't like that. We're Valve. <laughs> but the article does point out, you know, transaction fees are just getting stupid. I mean, they're not completely cray cray, but they're, everything's in flux. And here's the thing though. I, I can't really get upset at Valve for this. Because you got to think, like, if you bought a game for, oh, let's say 30 MBTC a year ago, you probably want to go play in traffic mm. right now because that's, that's tapping mm -hmm. like 300 wet, stinky caches. And, uh, okay, yeah, here's the thing, though. I, I mean, this is just the beginning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I fully expect other stores that currently accept because of these transaction fees they're going to stop taking Bitcoin. But if, if you if you uh, go to our Bitcoin or Magic Internet monies, it, th this is somehow good, I guess, because that, that's what they're telling Every, me. Every, everything is good for Bitcoin, man. I mean, that, that's the thing. The, the currency is so volatile at this point. There's so much speculation going on it that it is effectively worthless as currency. It's a commodity Quit now. Quit saying like you, you, you work for the government. Quit products. trying to destroy freedom. Why do you hate freedom, Jordan? I don't work. I, I don't work for the government. This friggin' Portuguese jerk over there works for the government. But um, yes, I work for the English government. Yeah. I, <laughs> shut up. It's the it's a government. Therefore, the government's. <laughs> Uh, that, I, I mean, I mean that said, yeah, like I, I can totally see like Newegg um, and a bunch of these other storefronts that are accepting Bitcoin being like, mm -hmm. yeah, no, this is we we we'd like to we'd like to actually know what the hell we're getting in terms of like value for the purchase because you know it 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 goes both ways too. Oh, hey, that thirty MBTC is now worth ten thousand dollars or whatever. Oh, now it's worth thirty cents. Well, That's, uh, so it's much definitely a thing, man, and. But, you know, it's called crypto commodities for a reason, clunks. Um, wait, it's not. But the valuation and the purchasing power of any fiat currency, and let's face it, that's what an American wet stinky, a limey pound, or uh, what do you guys use in Canada? Maple leaves or some shit? Monopoly money. That, Monopoly okay. money. Um, yeah. yeah, the purchasing power and valuation of that also fluctuates. So, um yeah, not not to the degree that Bitcoin does, though. I don't know, man. You ask Zimbabwe about that, and they'll be like, "Yo." <laughs> well, I, I mean, if you ask Zimbabwe about a lot of things, you're either viable to get liable to get an answer or shot. So well, uh, okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, what do we got up next? I wish I I, I wish I wish upon a fish. So uh, Steam wish lists. Uh, you now can specify platform specific wish lists which means that now uh, developers can get some hard data about uh, man, I, th this this picture they they have on uh on this thing pisses me off it's like oh yeah two people want this game for Linux. that is that is that is highly highly unlikely but uh you can you can now specify which platforms you want games on devs can take a look at that and say hey this platform has a lot of demand we have a lot of informatics for it and therefore, they may be incentivized to actually shit out a Linux port, which means that virtual programming 
is going to be very, very happy. They're going to be rolling in some Bitcoin. Um, and I mean, this this is I, th- I think this is ultimately a good move because the Steam hardware survey does not represent at all an accurate snapshot of like market penetration for basically anything. Hmm. So ha- ha- having having a direct line to customers that actually want your product for a given platform is a good thing. Well, uh, one though, of the things like, I, will... I, I would be interested in seeing what the actual like data after, after after like maybe six months or something, what the actual data provided to devs are like, what are, what are the occurrences of people who want Linux ports versus Mac ports and so on and so forth. Pedro, one thing we talked about on weekly daily Wednesdays was the, we were talking about the adoption of Ryzen and everyone yes. is like, well, the steam surveys are the holy truth from the flying spaghetti monster himself or itself. No, because one dude's like, yo, uh, these numbers are bullshit. Could you give me some real numbers? Send that to a Valve employee. He's like, yeah, we got real numbers. <laughs> we we don't use the Steam survey shit. Yeah. And he sent them real numbers with actual <laughs> breakdown of Ryzen adoption. So always keep that in mind. But if you don't already have SteamOS plus Linux set as your filter, it's absolutely the time to do it. Let the developers know there's demand yeah. for it. And then Pedro might leave you alone. No, actually, I would like to propose an an exercise, not just for the people listening and watching to the show right now, but if you know more people in the Linux community, especially the Linux gaming side of things, uh, let them know about this, because I kind of want to see just how far this will impact games uh, receiving a Linux port or being developed with Linux in mind from the get-go. So set your preferences to Linux plus SteamOS if if you haven't already, and you should have already, just saying. Mm-hmm. Uh, now go and wish list all those Windows only or Windows and Mac only games that you've wanted. Uh, I'm a little bit guilty of uh, going to Bethesda, just sorting by Bethesda titles and adding basically all of them. <laughs> um, and wait and see. I am genuinely curious. Just wait and see what kind of difference this will actually make. Now, the cynic in me says it won't have any, but I wouldn't mind being proven wrong on this one. Yeah. See, I'm pretty sure that will just result in people buying these game, these Windows games for people because they're <laughs> boneheaded do good <do-gooding> friendos. <laughs> well, um, if you ever... S- yeah, see, I, I'm not going to do that because people gift me games out of spite, mostly. Um... One game I you might I, I, want. I give, I give it to you South Park out of spite. I still have not redeemed it. <laughs> you want it back? Good, good to see my money. Good to see my money is put together. Listen, man, I, I was I, I was counting on it, appreciating in value. It was an investment decision or some shit yeah. like that. I don't know where I'm going with that. I'm going to besiege what I'm going what to. Is, what is it good for Bitcoin? I. I no empty, I think maybe Atomic or Foxy. They, they were playing some of this, and why are we talking about it? Well, let me tell you, Brad. Multiplayer and level editor is here. It's ready, just like nine months after it was supposed to be. But free update. It's still in early access. Nothing's changed. What is Besiege? You should know about it by now. It's, of uh, what, Legos, Minecraft for horrible Le- people? Is what Le- like to Legos say. for horrible people. Yeah, you, you build murder-rating machines, um, and you go out now you can actually go at each other with a friend. Uh, I don't know how many people I'm sure we'll find out in a hot second, how many people can join. I launched it. Mm-hmm. Didn't have anyone to play with. Didn't really have the time before the show to get in and try it. Excited about this. I want to see how it works out. It is in the, there's like, this is in wicked beta. So expect crashes, but I do want to say this because besiege has been in early access for two plus years. Okay. It has. And, you know, my first thought's like, ooh, time for me to go unpack Tipsy Danger and fuck all y'alls up. But I hope that the development team behind Besiege realize that this this is kind of make or break for this game, guys. Because this is multiplayer shit. Because if you remember way back when, animated GIFs of Besiege was all the new hotness for about a month. And flaming jerk off robots for right, the win. Exactly. And <laughs> this multiplayer, you're gonna get you're gonna get some juice from this. This is gonna be on the Twitches, it's gonna be on the YouTubes, it's gonna be on the Reddits, the Instagrams, and all that. But if you think for one hot damn second 
that this is going to buy you another two years of development, you're fucking mistaken, Brad. So but get it rolled out. I, I'm saying this for your own good. I'm not hating at all. I'm just like, just, just you want you have this thing pushed out by, I don't know, March, something like that, or this is it. I mean, you're not going to be able to th- throw. Uh, n- <laughs> Go ahead. What? <laughs> See, there's an issue there because in in the article they say besiege is still very much still an alpha state, so there are likely to be bugs, and we'll be working hard to fix them. Alpha state? Mm-hmm. Really? <laughs> it's not in fucking alpha. The game's not in alpha. I mean, two years ago the game was not in alpha. It just wasn't finished. So there's not been this. Is, the last time we got an update for Besiege, like four or five months ago. So yeah, just just keep that in mind, yeah. guys, because this is a really cool game. It's a really fun game. It deserves a lot more attention than it receives. But kind of like Distance, Survive the Distance. It's like yeah, they g- need to push it out. Got to get it out the door, man. Got to get it out the door. Um, Jordan, I I actually heard you audibly squee. Across the damn ocean when you found out about this. Uh that may or may not have been a fart, but sure. I know this is this is uh, Darkest Dungeon, the color of madness. Uh new DLC. It adds um additional uh it adds an additional area in town, it adds an additional mission type was which is effectively a horde mode. And oh my god, I can't stop my erection. Please send help. I I I I I, I don't know. Yeah, like it, 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 it's 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 Lovecraft. It's more Lovecraftian goodness, which is kind of one of my favorite elements of uh, Darkest Dungeon. Except when it murders my entire party because I decided to you know tickle Cthulhu's butthole and whatnot. Hmm. But um, <laughs> they, they 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 had some new year again. Uh, we'll we'll, pro- we'll probably end up picking it up again. Um, you you if you uh, watched the live stream on Thursday, you caught me playing the pre DLC this. Um, and yeah, that, that's it. There, there's also a Switch version inbound, which basically means that if I ever pick up a Switch, it'll then become a $300 Darkest Dungeon slash Pokemon machine that I play on the bus. Mm. Yeah, I, I saw this news and Darkest Dungeons, I can, I can watch you and Sandy play it and th- that's pushing it. That's pushing it for me. It listen, listen. It's it's one of those special games where you have to be sufficiently masochistic, and you got to be into turn based like RPGs, like uh, like 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 the adage goes. Uh, the I don't need thing... sex because RNG fucks me every day. Yeah, that's that was the biggest thing for me was just how much the RNG kept fucking me over in Darkest Dungeon, uh, and every now and again I'd get ooh. Someone got stressed, but actually got a boon instead of, like, a psychological disorder out of it. Nice. Uh, so now I have this valorous knight in my party, and there's this uh, sadistic douchebag at the back that keeps making fun of him, and he keeps getting stressed. Oh, look, he had a heart attack and he died. Well, fuck you, game. <laughs> it's a thing. Listen, the moral of the story is you gotta stay away from that fried chicken, man. It's tasty, but it'll, it'll clog your arteries up. Trans fats. So, um, Soma. It, 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 yes. it Soma Afamata. Yes, the Department of Health and Safety has gotten a hold to it, and it will no longer have... It's basically a walking story game now. Soma it has a safe mode. Now, this, this was actually a mod made, like, last year that disabled the robots... Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, you don't have to worry about getting triggered anymore. No, it's completely safe. And if you already thought Soma was just a wee on the boring side, ooh, yeah, this is going to be next level. Like, okay, so I, but you kind of got to put, I mean, maybe you like it if you just want to experience the story. I don't know. And, and and I mean that that's it, right? Soma isn't really a horror game. It's more of an it's it's more of an interesting science fiction story mm-hmm. than anything. And mm-hmm. the baddies are really, really much more of a nuisance than anything. It's not like Amnesia, where they're actually like critical to the gameplay. 
Here it's just like, oh, well, I got to sidestep this guy or I just got to avoid this guy. And I'm not really afraid of him yep. because I know exactly and what he is. He's just a creepy robot, man. I just want to see where the story is going. And it's not going. really so that your character energy. is afraid? Is that uh, apparently when you look at the monsters, it causes some weird thing with the sensors and you can't see them properly. So they're not scary. He, as he, in he, they're listen, just there he needs to, to update his graphics annoy drivers. The shit That's all I'm hearing. Yeah. <laughs> So, ironically, this actually stemmed from Frictional Zone fear of stepping out of their comfort zone. Uh, and so they had to put in some monsters because they couldn't just release a sci-fi narrative experience. They had to make a sort of horror-ish type game. And you can tell that those monsters were shoehorned in. And they weren't entirely sure by the time they got around to making the final bit of the game. Because they literally sidestep. It's like, uh, could you come over here a second and help us deal with the monsters? Okay, thank you. Uh, now you can finish the game. But... The biggest part that sticks up for me as the worst possible example of why those monsters suck is the vertical U-boat type of thing that you go into at one point in the game. They have those monsters with the glowy heads ro roaming all the corridors there. I hated that bit. I hated that bit so goddamn much. I did like the game, but that bit was... Yeah. Well, at least it had monsters in it, so you didn't end up with an RHG, the walking horror simulator. And mm -hmm. <laughs> you got to give frictional that. They, they put something in there to at least fucking avoid, so you're not playing an interactive story, which is... Well, the, I mean, I mean, there are there are there are puzzles and so on and whatnot, but again, like like I, like I said, the yeah. monsters are really just more of a nuisance than anything. They don't. They don't really add anything to the gameplay. I don't feel. Okay, that's the thing. It's there if you want it. Uh, yeah. Your fifis will now be safe from the monsters that you could avoid. Uh, finally, coming out of early access, is Polyball. Yes, balls of steel. Indeed, uh, you may remember a long time ago, Linux Gamecast Weekly. We played Spectre Ball, and this one uh, sheds the neon aesthetic for a more brown slash gray it's racist, one. Man, I'm not changed. entirely sure that's a good thing, but <laughs> it is, well, uh, that's not a ball. That's one of those, uh, uh, what do you call them? Wait, the, uh, wait, nope, 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 time out, uh, ti ti time out. <laughs> well, what the hell do you consider a ball then, because... What do you think that is? A square? <laughs> no, that, that looked no, like it, it, it's a, a one type of those of polyhedron. Uh, sixty something sided die. Yeah. Hey, listen. Uh, but yeah, I, I apparently you... you can actually have multiple balls. That if you got to make a ball with I, fucking I triangles, come on. It's going to end up looking like that. I, I, I don't know about you, Pedro, but I have two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But this one uh, actually doesn't look terrible. Uh, which is a surprise because if you have an Android tablet, if you have an Android phone, you've seen the kind of shit of uh, like ball um, spin around, no, that's roll around ball. games uh, that you have. Yeah, uh, and it's uh, it's I, w I don't want to say refreshing, but it's good to see a ball rolling around game. That actually has some thought put into the levels and actually has a bit of a world around it instead of being just like floating platforms, although there are plenty of those from what I can see. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. It definitely... What's it currently pressed at, B-Man? Uh, let's see. Over here What's, in Poundland, it is ten ninety nine. It's not too bad. The yeah. main reason <laughs> I'm interested in this is because it's got that magical um, hyphenated multiplayer... So this could absolutely mm -hmm. be something for us to fuck around with in the after show. Just just, just yep. us playing with our balls, the three of us in a room? Too hot for the tubes, baby. <laughs> Speaking of balls. <laughs> oh, fuck this noise. Why are we even talking about it? Fuck this shit. We got some fucking level editor that I don't give a shit about. Jesus, they have some man. All right. Lighting. Is it, is it because that, you're that, Jewish? That, that, that is no it, one is absolutely it because cares you're about Jewish and this says happy time. holidays? You want it to say Happy Hanukkah, don't you? I want some fucking festivals. <laughs> Fuck your Christmas. <laughs> Fuck your penguins. Fuck your golf. Fuck this game. Goddamn. 
This is, this is just trash. Hot <laughs> heaping trash. They got they got they got a holiday update. They got they got like pirate ball holes. I don't give a shit about it. It's Man, definitely a thing. They got an editor update. Uh, yeah, uh, it's got some Christmas skinny shit. And yeah, Jordan has a rational fear of golf, but you can't really blame him. Not 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 an irrational fear, an irrational hatred. There's a difference. He confuses words sometimes, <laughs> so just don't hold that against him either. <laughs> it is there. The level editor looks neat. You, you get a bunch of uh, Christmassy decorative bullshit and speaking of games that need to get their ass out of early access oh yeah i, th- I think There's they should just another delete one. <laughs> the Git repo for this game i don't know just like do away with it it does no one any good whatsoever. it has uh they fixed several bugs with it but they need to be careful because part of this game's charm was the cataclysmic ways it would fuck up <laughs> I, I I know I know a great way this game picks up by starting. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there was that one point in time where you couldn't even start it. So yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, the, there was those months that you couldn't. So, <laughs> Serious Sam Fusion 2017 beta. It's got an update. Uh, rolls off the tongue. Three 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 two five four is available. When's it available? Right now. Uh, they've gone ahead and released a new patch, brings some performance improvement tweaks for people using Vulkan and DX12. Yeah, they finally added a DX12 render to it because they're that bored. Um, I ran some benches on it, didn't notice a fucking bit of difference, which, listen, I'm not saying anything bad about that because the Vulkan render and all the serious Sam business, top notch. You gotta love it. I, I don't think they can squeeze much more performance out of it. Uh, let's see. Maybe they, maybe, they, maybe they could squeeze some fewer crashes out of it, though. Th- that's kind of um, one of the things I was hoping other- for, man, was if you've watched a serious thing, is, especially if I'm streaming, we won't get that last level. It gets all fucked up and chuggy for me for no reason. Yeah, when when we're doing Underneath the Sun or whatever, um, there, there there's one part in the underground segments after the columns with the uh, monkey jaguar things, whatever the hell they are. Um, that the game just like freezes my system. I got to SSH into the box and mm. get the process. It doesn't happen on OpenGL, so this is clearly a Vulcan bug. Hopefully, that gets that fixed. But yeah, we're we're on the last level of serious Svung. on hard. So I'm curious if if on hard with friendly fire. Uh, so uh, I'm curious if we can Vulcan our way through it, and then I can be over and done with it, and go back to streaming. You know, fun games. Hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. so let's see. Up next, uh, now available on Linux and Corpse Spons. Party. Yeah, this is this is a sort of an indie darling that has been around for years. This is a Corpse Party. I was a reimagining remake of a popular-ish GR, uh, RPG maker game that was available on PSP. Jeez, man, right uh, out of the bat, someone's a... going to have sex with it. All right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what, what do you call it? Um, apparently they actually did a sort of, if you, if you remember the clue movie, the 1980s one with Tim Curry, where they had like different endings in each of the theaters, uh, they did something similar with the different platforms so that each, uh, each iteration of the game is slightly different so that when you discuss this game with your friends after mm-hmm. playing it on PC or, uh, or 3DS or whatever, uh, you all have different experiences, which I think is a kind of neat idea that isn't really explored as much mm-hmm. anymore. Um, but it's now available on Linux, uh, the latest and greatest version, uh, geez, and freaking Moe animation. You can pick it up for about 15 euros, so about $20. Uh, if, you want, if you want a horror RPG, it's, you know, rated fairly positive. Pedro, you played this? It is. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, I played this on the PSP. It was uh, packed in with a bunch of games I got off of the local video store when I installed custom firmware on it, mostly because it got rid of the uh, region lock, because the version I played was sort of kind of translated to English, very broken English at that. Uh, but yeah, no, so, I so played Pedro it, English. and it is, uh, it is a... Uh, it is a game. RPG, I guess, would be the right 
term. Yes, it is a game. It is a role-playing game of sorts. It's got that horror theme going for it. Um, but it is... It, it's not Persona level good, because that was probably the best one I played on the PSP. But it wasn't terrible, so I might actually pick this one up. Hmm. Um... Yeah. yeah, not my cup of chainsaw. Fourteen ninety nine. What sneaky cash is? Uh, maybe everyone digs it. Different endings, different strokes for different folks. Really good way to get people to buy multiple copies of your product. Good marketing, guys. So, last mm-hmm. but least, uh, Dying Light, Bad Blood. It's a thing you can. So, what does this have to do with Jeez. with Taylor Swift? I see. I don't know what a Taylor Swift is. So, uh, wh- whatever. Go listen to your K-pop. Um, <laughs> You can sign up for the global playtest. And what is it, man? Rapid looting, allies and traitors, evacuation, PvP, dying light. They want them some of that PUBG action is what I'm feeling on this one, man. Mm-hmm. And uh, hey, dying light runs on Linux and they would kind of have to uh, straight up bird culture and pull a dick move to make this where it didn't. And I don't know if I'm excited. No. All right. I am Still definitely leave silver. <laughs> Definitely not excited about this, but I'm willing to give it a crack because, I mean, it could be fun. And uh, I don't know. You can sign up for it right now. Get in line because, man, it was like two days ago when this thing went live. I did it and it was the next day before I got my confirmation emails. Like they got slammed. Their web zone was having trouble. So yeah, but you can get uh, invited to the parade. And on, beta. I think this one is actually a TD tiny uh, thing when compared to how PUBG does like the multiplayer PVP thing. This is like five people and you have limited uh, number of seats on the evacuation chopper. So basically you get a day in the Dying Light uh, city, find all the resources you need, collect blood samples from the infected, and you use those blood samples as currency to buy your way into the escape helicopter. And if so, you so it's work kind of like the end to of get the fuck blood box samples level in Left 4 Dead, but it's competitive. Eh, with a bit more resource management and gathering, with a it's still Dying Light. They they're still pushing that the breakable weapons and getting all the resources and crafting the stuff you need. So there is going to be that. Uh, I'm curious, but not really on the edge of my seat as it were. Hmm. Okay. That'll be in the show notes along with everything else. So you can give it in. If we get invited, if one of us does, uh, we'll give it some Mm -hmm. streams and you can come hang out with us and play it. It'll be brilliant. Take us the fuck out of here. No, we st- we still we still got we still got a little bit more to go, right? We still got new games. Oh, we man. have new games. This, uh, <laughs> the, the, the segment isn't over, man. It keeps going. This is this is like uh, tubular bells. You think it's over, and then a new segment starts. Empires of growth. Do, do, do you want ants? This is how you get ants. It's an early access strategy game. You play as ants. You uh, do it. You do ant colony things. Apparently, you're also the Zerg from StarCraft. Because you can steal DNA, uh, that that that's a thing. You can pick it up. It's how how how, how, much, how much is this shit? It's uh, 20, 20 euros. I don't know if it has retail pricing or not. Nineteen ninety nine. So yeah. it's nineteen whatever of your local particular currency. Uh, yeah, this is how you get ants. What what what? what, what Let's talk about some amusement parks because we, we got to wrap this segment up, man. It keeps going. <laughs> sure. <laughs> it's park bound. It's a, as they describe it, massively multiplayer playground featuring player crafted parks. And it's, uh, it looks like after show bait. Absolutely does. Uh, those, you can those, download. Those aren't tentacles. I'm assuming. Tentacles. Uh, I haven't actually tried it. Yeah, download some parks, pl- uh, get together with your friends, play through them, and. I guess compared to the other after show bait crap we've seen lately, it can't be that bad, right? Uh, I, I don't know, man. We we've, we've played a yeah, lot, of, accepted. lot of non textured <laughs> bullshit lately. Yes. So um, <laughs> maybe this would be a little different because uh, Tempest is also out. Ah, uh, yes. 
Tempest, uh, it's t- Yarhar Fiddly D. Do what you want because a pirate is free. Something, something, you are a pirate. Um, basically, it's fancy looking the windward pretty much. There's a kraken. That's always the thing. So you get to say, release the kraken. Um, but it is, yeah, effectively just a prettier windward. You sail around, gather commodities, fight other pirate ships, and occasionally fight a giant squid. It's like Sherman's Lagoon, but prettier. I would like a prettier looking windward, to be honest. See, you, you keep saying windward. You, we'll you, see. You, both of you are fucking high. This is not a prettier windward. What this is, is a playable vendetta. Oh, snap. <laughs> I don't will think you ru- get out of the will ship. Will run on the 980? <laughs> mm-hmm. That's what this is, <laughs> man. Ar- 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 <laughs> quite, quite possibly, with, and with finally, us wandering around uh, in town and getting gunfights. Since we haven't had our share of uh, Minecraft-like games in a while, well, this is Project 5, Sightseer. It is an open-world multiplayer sandbox... <laughs> Uh, explore the procedural world, discover resources, and... Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, no, it's another one of those. And to be honest, I'm all for the random explorey type games that don't have a whole lot to do in them. But the resource acquisition needs to not be a complete grind fest. And I'm not entirely sure this game will do that because they do focus... Uh, they seem to focus on the resource gathering quite a bit. But hey, you get to drive a little thingy around. You get to drive many thingies around. Okay. Thank Christ. It's over. We're done. Steam segment over. That was like 40 fucking stories. The segment has gone on long enough. Coming up next, Mesa Drivers Titan. Ah. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the news will be coming up in just a second. But hey, if you didn't join us for the live version, you totally should have. Because we talked a little bit about the Patreons. Ven's going to give you a little summed up version of how things are going to play out. And then we will thank you lot for all the support you've been throwing our way. Yeah, real quick. Um, go to patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast because I did cut that into its own separate video will be our second update. We're going to keep everyone updated on this nonsense. Uh, First things first, we're not changing a FSM damn thing right now until that dust settles. Patrons kind of went radio silent on this whole deal. We're kind of hoping that they will perform a rectal uh, cranial inversion and everything might go back to normal. It'll be decent. Um, We do know about drip. We know about Hatrian, we know about LibrePay. Those are all options that we are fully willing to explore. I'm not going to make any knee-jerk moves right now until this business plays itself out because we got like two weeks before anything is of matter. If it does play itself out like that, looks like we're going to go monthly. So that's going to be a thing. You'll know everything that we know. That's it. So go back and watch the, be, we had well, like a 30 minute long discussion yeah. where we covered basically everything, but we'll keep you updated. There, there's going to be some supplemental reading as well in the show notes posted in the space below. Maybe there'll be a link in YouTube. Doesn't matter. If you want to read it, read it. Otherwise you can head over to linuxgamecast.com. Anyways, click the support button. We got, oh my God, Deutschland, an Amazon affiliate links because apparently people in uh, apparently people in Germany have decided that they want to shop at Amazon and also give us money. We got, um, an Amazon wish list where you, if you feel like chilling out a thousand bucks and buy Ven or myself a Vega card and we will stick it in our box and, and use it. It's going to be fun. Um, you can also, uh, donate to us via PayPal for that exact same fee that Patreon's going to be charging you, or maybe, <laughs> maybe give us some Bitcoin. Uh, maybe it'll be five bucks today. Maybe it'll be a thousand dollars tomorrow. But why would they want to support know. this horse shit? Wouldn't it be easier if we just read like five ads per hour or some something like that? <laughs> but wouldn't that make more sense? I, I mean, I mean, probably. But then we'd have to fact check, fact check our ads, and then I'd have to like correct you whenever you said something inaccurate about the ads, and the advertisers wouldn't like that too much. It's yeah. Jordan already up interrupts enough but, people as it is. No. Well, well, listen, what if we could read an advertisement <laughs> yeah. about a mattress made of jello that could fly? <laughs> you know, I I'd totally be down for that. Be down for that. 
Uh, like like I said, if if you want to get us that flashlight sponsorship, hundred percent down. <laughs> send us flashlights. I'm really lonely, you guys. It will be um, brilliant. But, yeah. Um, hey man, yeah. Let's just thank everyone who is making this nightmare fuel, this train wreck, this community, or as we like to call it, our tight knit, not semi, but full on dysfunctional family. Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. We like to dance. We hopefully we're going to be able to stick with that. And um, we do like to dance for our dinner. We got a bunch of stuff you can get as rewards. And that's never going to change because we like giving stuff back. We don't just want to sit back and yeah. it's like, oh, charity case. No, for, we want to work for it. Stay tuned for Doctor Who Day because uh, there's going to be a special game of Who mm-hmm. for the Christmas special. We're going to talk about the brand new Doctor. That'll be fun. Oh. Um, and yeah, again, big thanks to all you guys could not do this without your support. We got four streams a week, every week I to you thank you guys for just come, come showing up and, you know, giving us money, give Confirm, us more money. Jordan's not valve. <laughs> hey man, if somebody yeah. does pick us up, I, I can count to three. Anything from our wish list? Frank keeps track of that on his fine upstanding cannibal wall. I want to thank everyone. We got Bradley, Jill, Steve, Maddie, Erod, Michael G, John M, Mr. Red, Linux Nero, Clockia, Steve O. <gasps> Damn it, I thought I was going to do that one breath. Uh, the Admiral JT, Trugglezwick, Mir, Luchers.net, known as Frenchie, and Inmag, latest person. But uh, we, we have a white elephant gift on there, which is the uh, <laughs> Vega, whatever the hell it is, air cooled or something. Listen, we were talking about this during the break. It's not the fact that it's $999 right now. It's the fact that I've seen it sell out twice. (laughs) That's frightening. But the reason I bring that up is because we soon might be able to run it on our Linux box. Yeah, it's a very, very maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, with, with, with this poor, new version positive of Mesa, thinking might. Because, yes, Mesa 17.3.0, uh, say that three times fast, is now um, available. It's stable. They've reached a point where they think that the new minor revision is all right. So you get a little bit of new functionality, namely the uh, S3 texture compression thing is no longer covered by um, a patent. So they basically, instead of you having to install the libdxtn uh, library separately, it's now built into Mesa proper. So you get full S3 texture compression out of the box with Mesa 17.3. Uh, They also support OpenGL 4.6. Well, they've increased support for OpenGL 4.6 on the open source drivers. It's still not 100% there, but it is progress. And they also support OpenGL 2.1 on the Vivante GPU that some of the rock chip GPUs use. So if you have one of those tablets, hey, there you go. Yeah, there's there's also a bit of uh, good news for uh, you R600 users who still haven't upgraded your old AMD cards. Uh, R600 gets a little bit of love. They got some new uh, OpenGL ES extensions. They're moving that closer yep. to OpenGL GLES 3.1 compliance. So for those of you who have games that require OpenGL ES and are using R600, you get the support. Uh, no new stuff with uh, the Vulcans yet. Uh, hopefully, 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 sometime soon. Oh wait, no, there is a bunch of new. Uh, there's a bunch of new RadV functionality. I was wrong. I'm a filthy yeah. fucking liar. Yeah, um, they have multiple extensions, Vulcan extensions uh, uh, that RadV are not supported and, by the uh, NV and RadV drivers. Hmm? <laughs> yep. So that is definitely a thing. Uh, soon, hopefully soon, we'll get that Vegas support. So that white elephant gift will be a little less. I like, I like, I like, it is really cool. And especially when we're going to be rolling out with a 415 kernel, it's going to have Mm -hmm. some preliminary support for this business out of the box. We might have a legitimate, you know, I'm really hoping that my next video card purchase, I would be like, Hmm, maybe I can finally get some AMD and not pull my damn hair out trying to get everything up and working right. And also, so Feral and other developers don't have a moving target to work at. And yes, I can hear you now. Why are you giving AMD so much love? You hate NVIDIA. No, we love NVIDIA. See, we're going to talk about them right now because they, <laughs> they, they announced yeah, the... Yeah, all, all, all sorts of... 
yeah, the uh, Titan V, not the GTX Titan V, because this isn't for gaming. Oh, no, this sir. Is, right. This is for uh, AI, natural language, all this stuff. Effectively, it is a consumer grade version of the Tesla V100. Uh, it's got the same number of CUDA cores, a little, uh, some slightly faster boost clock, uh, some gimped memory bandwidth that's using 3072 bit instead of um, 4096. A little bit less RAM, but 4 gigs less than the GDDR5. Only capable of 110 teraflops as opposed to 112 teraflops as per the Titan. And you can pick it up for the low, low price of a couple grand. Which is, you know, a lot less than, say, the $10,000 um, Tesla card. Which only has one output and can't really be used for graphical stuff. It's primarily a compute Hard. Also true. So, I mean, for me, this is, you know, coming in at 3,000 wet, stinky American caches. It's kind of even a bit much for enthusiasts. But what do we have here, ladies and gentlemen? I'll tell you what we have here. This is a consumer level Tesla card. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's what this is. I mean, the bandwidth has been neutered 635 gigabits a second down to from 3,072. Uh, that's being compared to a Tesla V100. Then again, that's going to run you $10,000 plus or minus. This is kind of the poor man's Tesla V100. But I think this is important that this should be the headline in all these articles. This is not meant for graphics. This is done for AI research and the likes and simulations. Yeah, this is for CUDA and the general GPU compute, not 3D. But hey, uh, I was looking at the teraflop rating and, you know, I have a 1080. Thanks for that, Martin. Really appreciate it. Those nine teraflops pale, pale in comparison to the 110 of this one. Damn. <laughs> well, yeah, with 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 uh, five hundred with with about five thousand CUDA cores, it better have some <laughs> decent compute capability. <laughs> now, yes, you you might be saying yes, you can actually use this for gaming. This is true. You could theoretically do that, but I could also I don't know come up with some equally ridiculous analogy for something that shouldn't be used for something else. Spaghetti so you can with still, carrots. You can still, this is, yeah, you can do. Ew, ew, why would you do that? You disgusting. I'm, because I'm a damn monster. That's wrap why. it around the carrots. <laughs> you are you you no no. You just make spaghetti noodles out of carrots. Out of the carrots. Because yeah, you you're a savage. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> because you, but but you know what? Wishes, wishes right. may come true. No, maybe not. I don't know. No. No. So, uh, this showed up in the show notes. I'm not entirely sure where this came from, but uh, someone found the person that is uh, a member or a proud member of the product Unix team at GOG. Uh, his, uh, well, his name is very, very um, descriptive. He calls himself Linux Van Gogh. Van Gogh, in this case. Uh, and well, he apparently is one of the person or one of the people in charge of the Mac and Linux side of things, you know, uh, very teeny tiny as they may be, but he is one of the people that takes care of, of that particular side of GOG. So is he like in charge of the actual Linux slash Mac ports or the listen, wine? Listen, motherfucker, versions? here's what I want to know. You're part of Team Unix. <laughs> okay, Unix team, he says with a question mark, because I know Jordan's going to argue this with me, because neither Linux or uh, OS X, uh, or ni neither of them are based on Unix. So it does, does like GOG have Unix ports like AT&T, Belt Labs, Unix? titles that we don't I, I mean about. i mean yeah they they, they like got that system v solaris up and running hp ux oh, okay but yes i gotta i do gotta bring up that osx is darwin darwin is free bsd yes you'll say bsd is a variant of the original at&t unix but it is still unix it is posix certified for all intents and purposes it is a unix operating system um I, even though I will say that OSX implements a bunch of functions required for POSIX that do nothing. They're just there for compliance. <laughs> but what are you going to do? Yeah, I got, I got to kind of agree with Pedro. We don't really know what exactly this guy does. He may just actually just yeah. be in charge of the mm -hmm. uh, Linux Mac PR stuff. For all we know, maybe he can get back to us. Maybe he'll show up on Weekly Daily Wednesday. Maybe he'll show up on this show. We can have a little chat conversation, see what really is going on inside the gogs when it comes to our favorite open source operating system, you know, BIOS. Hmm. 
So, mm-hmm. uh, Pedro, uh, I got a question for you, man. I got a question for Shoot. you. Um, wouldn't it be kind of silly, nay, absolutely re- cockulous <laughs> to implement a Vulcan render for a gaming system that it was just so primitive it made the PS2 look good? So, uh, are we talking about the Virtual Boy emulator? <laughs> Uh, no, I don't know. There's about the probably Saturn a Virtual emulator. Boy emulator out there somewhere. Uh, but this is uh, the PPSS PP 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 PP. Uh, it's it makes me got the new version out, 1.5.4, and the big news: it's got Vulcan. Yeah. And to be fair, the Vulcan bits do work. Um, it's I tried playing Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII on it. It works. It actually works really well, even at 5x scaling, which used to be a big, big killer in OpenGL back uh, when I tried it with the uh, FX8370E. But now, with the Ryzen's and the Vulcans, all that scaling, all that anisotropic filtering, all of that nice uh, stuff that you can actually introduce to the PSP games, which never had it, um, those games look good now. Which is awesome. And it, well, the, the, it looks like PlayStation FPS 1 games, through. let's be real. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a PS1 Cause, cause in real, a teeny tiny shell. <laughs> yeah, because that, that, that's, that's what the PSP is. It's a portable PlayStation 1. Yeah. Um, all, said, all, all said, though, I mean, it's nice to see more uh, more emulators taken on Vulcan. Uh, I, again, it my, my, my main thing with this is that the more open source projects that use Vulcan... The more that skill set mm-hmm. proliferates, right? People the become more familiar community. with it, right? Yeah, and and then and then when these guys grow up and get real jobs, or maybe they already have real jobs, send your hate mail to Jordan at pretty... LinuxGameCast.com. Yeah. <laughs> bring bring it on! I love it. Nobody wants to talk to me. It's the only validation I get. Um, no, but uh, when when they go to their jobs and maybe they have some sort of graphical programming job, they'll say, "Hey, why don't we use Vulkan? Because I already know how to use it." And that means no more DirectX 12, which means easier porting paths to Linux, even though devs can't be asked anyways, but a man can dream. Hey, man, it's good to see this. It's good to see adoption. I really think that almost does it, especially for like 3D emulators that I, I'm, I risk saying that all major emulators right now, you know, for 3D era of gaming have support for Vulcan. Um, Jordan's kind of joking. He's like, what about mm-hmm. uh, Xenas or Jens? <laughs> Man, some of those used to have glide renders. I shit you not. <laughs> I remember that back in the day. Um, good to see more Vulcan everywhere. Fuck DX12. And my, thank you. Thank you, Microsoft, for locking that to Windows 10 and killing it for <laughs> us. That that was actually <laughs> very, very nice of you. So they, uh, they made the exact same mistake they did with DirectX. Uh, what was it? DirectX ten? Yeah, that was locked in Vista yeah. with Vista. Yeah, Oof. <laughs> but you know that would require them learning from their fuck ups. That's not very Microsoft. <laughs> no, the, yeah. So um, it's it's not it's not lupus. It's never lupus. No man. Uh, so Strider in chat realm, you know him as Frenchy Matthew Commandon. Uh, he does Lutris. It's an open gaming platform. It lets you install old games, new games, wine games, native games, never winter nights um, on your Linux mm-hmm. box. And for the most part, if you get over the nightmare interface, it works very well. Well, apparently, Strider get tired of people asking him the same damn questions <laughs> over and over and over. So we have a fax section at Lutris.net. Things like, how do you get in touch with the Lutris community? So uh, I'm not even going to comment on that. What is Lutris runtime? GameX crush? This, these are some basic questions that you should know. And guess what? Now you will know the answer. And they're all there. I'm, I, you like, got to go, scroll all the way to the bottom if you, if you want that Overwatch, though. I'm th- just here for Overwatch. Top, Don't care about anything else. Please refer to the following article on the GitHub wiki. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just, just a little suggestion, Strider. Move that to the top because I think that's what people are there for. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, it, yeah. It, it, it's good. <laughs> and really, really, all this means is that you should tweet at Strycor with all these questions mm-hmm. that he's already answered. 
just to make him miserable because it will delight me. Well, I love, I mean, this is why I love Strider's the reason I no, no longer send bug reports to developers. <laughs> Oh, he bangs that drum constantly. <laughs> I, no, he is, because uh, he ignores, he's like, I don't have time to fix that problem. <laughs> I'm like, okay, deaf ears. Uh, yeah. may, 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 maybe he needs some more volunteers. Maybe he should impri- provide some incentives, like mailing people locks of his hair. This is also true. Hey, something that has almost had all the bugs beaten out of it is our, f- I think, our OG favorite almost. psychopaths. <laughs> Yeah, they're 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 get they're getting close. Uh, this is uh, Open More with Nod point four three dot not released on December fifth. Um, they're getting they're getting close. Uh, apparently, there's still no shadows over Morrowind because uh, their shadows aren't re-implemented mm-hmm. using the um, Open Scene Ref. Um, they mention if you're going to be running this on the Linuxes, which you should be doing, uh, you need to have Qt four and Libping twelve. And some Mac OS bugs. They have a bunch of AI fixes. That's uh, kind of the main thing here is they're improving AI. Um, they have uh, keyboard navigation for menus now. Um, some options uh, for, uh, for for Windows and non-platforms. You can do the Control F Linux over here. They got a big long list of yeah. bugs that they have squished otherwise. And... I, I think they really, really what we're waiting for now is we're, we're waiting for that 1.0 release because they teased us. They're like, well, you know, if we can get this implemented, then maybe we can start looking at implementing Fallout or Skyrim. And everyone just started mm-hmm. salivating at about mm-hmm. the same time at that point. <laughs> yep. But the big thing, well, at least for me anyway, is that uh, they are getting really, really, really close to just working out all the kinks and getting all of the functionality that they had in uh, Ogre and that Morrowind had in its original version because they're getting down to the teeny tiny bugs like uh, damage not showing up for uh, projectiles and tooltips, Switching. the success rate for enchanting, the melee weapons reach and speed. It's like all just a teeny tiny stuff that most people never even pay attention to. They're fixing it and they're adding their own a little bit of flavor to it, which I guess is necessary when you're doing an entire game of the size so, of Morrowind and re-implementing it in a new engine. Yeah. What, what do you want to bet that it's going to be these psychopaths, probably 10 to 15 years from now, will be the first ones to actually fix the game-breaking bugs that still exist in fucking Skyrim? <laughs> I, I, they, Most they, they likely, gotta keep the yes. bucket physics in though, <laughs> where you can like clip through walls with buckets. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Just, just, just because that that's like a major speedrunning technique. Well, let's go. And and, and th- 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 this this might actually be the thing where they have to like preserve bu- bugs that originally existed in the engines to make it technically feature complete. So oh, that exactly. Can use it for that, speed runs you you got to walk a wicked tightrope because some of those bugs like don't mm-hmm. take those out, and then there's going to be others that. Uh, then you're going to end up with like the mm-hmm. buggy cascade of like, oh shit, uh, you, you can't take that one out because it's going to break these other three yeah. things. Yeah. Uh, th- or we like to call it the Windows kernel. Um, <laughs> engine re implementations, cave story, uh, a somewhat, somewhat upgraded, refactored version of NX Engine. And it's NX Engine Evo. Wanted to give it some love. They've uh, updated it SDL2. Better resolution support, gamepad force feedback support, um, modern main menu. Just a lot of fixes. Linux and OS X, it's there. Uh, Jordan, what are your thoughts on this? I like their build instructions because instead of providing apps, get blah, 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 they just list out the libraries that you need, which is nice because it makes everyone else feel the pain about trying to figure translate package names to your specific distributions. Um, but yeah, no, if you want to, you know, uh, run an updated version of Cave Story with, um, I don't know, maybe, maybe if you are trying to game in Wayland and you really, really love Cave Story, mm-hmm. uh, this is a thing because yeah. it will support SDL. And again, more people should use SDL because it gives you Wayland for free. <laughs> Do it. I don't know. I'm, I'm just thinking right now somewhere there, there's an Arch user that just heard that when you were like hunting down there's like, you know, 30, there you are, right? 
<laughs> you know that, right? Oh, pro- pro- there's there's probably like a PPA or a copper repo mm-hmm. or whatever. Who cares? I don't know. It's neat. I thought everyone should know about it because, you know, Strider does put I mean, Cave Story was a really fun game. And it was like one of the first games we got. And not the first, yeah, but it, the first it, batch it of games. Yeah, it was one of the early bundles. Yeah, yeah. definitely yep. a good thing. I think that's going to do it for the news. We need to head to the valley, yeah. to the hills. Yes. Run run to the hills. Run for your run life. Run to the hills. And hopefully not spike crash. <laughs> the hills have valleys. <laughs> it's the uncanny valley. You know, it might be said that the show has already peaked, and if so, I think it's time to take a little trip into the valley. This is Valley from Blue Isle Studios, developed on the Unity engine, although you wouldn't necessarily know it from looking at it. If you pick it up for around 15 to 20 of your local particular currency, what is it? Explore vast and beautiful world of valley using the power of the LEAF suit. A fierce exoskeleton that grants exceptional speed and agility along with the phenomenal ability to manipulate life and death of all living things. Uh, if you don't know what this is, wow, you haven't really been paying attention. This is the chairquisition. This is where we uh, pick a game, we talk about it, maybe give it a little bit of QA that its developers uh, neglected to give it, and uh, give you a review, a recommendation to whether or not you should uh, buy it or not. So we got our four cat. We got our four chair rating system. One chair means it's garbage. Two chairs means that's meh. Three chairs means that's pretty good. Four chairs means that's awesome. And we got our categories of doom mixed with the working shiny sounds, controls, and fun. So we do this in a bit of a roundtable fashion these days. So I think I'll start off with mixed with the working. Uh, there will be some uh, inopportune spike crashes here. Uh, you'll be playing this game. Maybe maybe you'll be, be in a level transition. Maybe you'll just finish a level with a really annoying platforming segment, and then it will crash, and then you'll have to do the entire thing over again. Um, that that seems to be a universal constant, except on whatever Moon Hardware Pedro is running. I think he's just running it on Windows. Let's be real. Um, <laughs> no, but, no, nope, nope, nope. Uh, you bumped but, to sixteen oh four, and I played the game all the way through without a single crash. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. On on uh, Fedora twenty seven sixty four bit on the i seven sixty seven hundred HQ with the GTX nine sixty M, I got a couple spike crashes and some fairly inopportune times, which almost made almost made the nope out of the game, just because I, I get frustrated when I have to redo platforming segments. Uh, but uh, it's it's a, it gets a little chuggy sometimes, uh, especially on laptop hardware. Uh, even on medium, it was struggling to keep above thirty for the most part. It was for the most part smooth at thirty, but there were definitely some moments where uh, it, w- it was chugging along. What about you, Ben? Uh, let's see, man. Yeah, Spite Crash is absolutely 10,000% legit. And yeah, for me, really in our opportune times, man. Bit me twice. Bit me twice hard. Not in a good way. No giggity for you, game. And since this game doesn't really have much of a save system, it saves when it fucking feels like it, which is basically means at the end of every level, guess who had to go through that level again? That's a real thing. Um, interesting, interesting bug for a Unity title. If you have a Vivaldi or Chromium open, the game will not launch. So th- there's your free pro tip right there. I don't know how the fuck they managed to do that. This is a known bug, though. I did go back and find out that this bug has been reported. And they have ignored it. I, did, I didn't know Bad death. Bad death. And here's the thing. On the Ryzen 7 1700, clocked at 3.6 gigajoules with a 980, a 1080p, 6070 all day long. Um, at UHD 3840 by 2160, kind of mid 30s. I mean, 30s and above, but um, yeah, you're not really going to do, do a whole lot of UHD gaming on this with a 980. Pedro? Yeah, no, with the 1080, it was uh, fine at 1080p, even with everything cranked. I think I saw a couple of dips to the 40s in areas where it was a lot of lighting effects going on. But throughout most of the game, it was hitting 70, 80, 70, 80 all the time. So yeah, no, it, it is pretty good with the Ryzen 5 backing it up and had new issues running. But there was one thing that 
didn't actually make with the working for me, which was the subtitles. Because whenever the subtitles came up, I would see the first line, and then it would stop. It wouldn't keep changing the subtitles as the uh, audio tape or whatever you were listening to went along. It would just be stuck there. That was the one thing That's that what you get for really didn't make with the working for me. Okay, so collectively... What did this three, end up three, getting? I, I think about three chairs. I, I, I gave it three. You yeah. gave it two? Yep. And Pedro Pedro gave it four. So moving on to the shiny mm-hmm. and sounds. Ven, I, I hear you would like to gush about this game. I'm not really gushing. I'm just saying what I'm seeing with my pussies, man. I like games like this. Why do I like games like this? They prove that Unity can be both performant and pretty. Valley does these things and does it in spades, indoor, outdoor areas, all wicked smooth, not something you see with Unity a whole lot. Environments completely coherent. Mm-hmm. There's no fucking store bought asset bullshit and just randomly stapled in. Kind of wish the main baddies that you normally encounter, uh, they just look a little outside of the world. I don't know. That didn't 100% gel with me, but let's talk about the music because it's totes. 100% totes outstanding. I loved it. That caught me off guard. Mm-hmm. What the hell's going on there, man? didn't expect that i haven't heard shit i was like oh man this is unexpected since hollow knight another indie title that i really enjoyed from an indie developer because you don't normally get that business the voice acting is what i like to call passable plus which basically means they didn't go with the lowest fucking bidder i mean it it's good enough to get the job done and you're not going whoa that was somebody across the room using a headset mic um (sighs) Visually, Howard literally phoning in his lines. Visually, pretty amazeballs. Even more amazeballs that it runs like it does and looks like it looks, proving that Unity is a tool and it can be used to great effect. And I believe it was done great effect, man. I, I mean, all across the board, straight up four chairs on this one. Oh yeah. Pedro? It uh, is very, very, very pretty, and the music is just freaking spot on, as I already mentioned. Uh, there are a couple of um, running on rails, uh, electrified rail sequences. On the first one, the music alone turned it from just being a bit where you run down a corridor to, OMG, run faster, run faster, jump, run fast again, Whee! And you also need, you also need like to a... point out that the music is synced with landing on the rails. I mean, oh yes, it yeah. is. Uh, while you were in the air, it was a very soft but still epic thing. And the moment you hit the rails, it just hammered down again. It's it was really well done. I was smiling like a lunatic throughout the whole thing. That was a really good set piece, and it shows just if you put a little bit of effort into the aesthetics of your game, you. You can get a lot, mm. a lot done. Oh, so oh yeah. To them. It, the, and and the the games, I, I feel one of its strongest points is definitely just the the visual and audio fidelity. Um, again, look what happens when you don't use stock Unity assets. The soundtrack, um, mm-hmm. it's a little flute heavy. It kind of reminds me of kind of uh, Jethro Tull, Ian Anderson style Fever Dream, almost. Um, there's there's lots of good instrumentation, lots of good soundtrack variety in the various areas. Uh, the 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 battle music, if you can call it that, is sufficiently, I don't know, not no, I, w- I wouldn't say hype worthy, but it it definitely imparts a like a sense of drama or urgency. Um, I don't I don't know, I, I kind of disagree with Ven on the on the the main baddie thing. I I I feel they look about consistent with sort of the the feel. They're supposed to be like the weird energy creature things especially I, I don't know were they supposed to be like witches or wendigos or something it's got them up when those there, guys uh, i don't know what the hell they're supposed yeah. to be i'm just like okay they're all right this is these are the things i'm going to be fighting all the time yeah and then i mean there, there's really only uh three types of enemies that you fight and they're color-coded depending on how much energy life force you got to pump into them but I mean, beyond that, that's every, every, everything else is uh, pretty much spot on. I, I think this is pretty much four to the floor for shiny sounds. Yep, cross oh, the yeah. board. Let's I do agree, it. Agree, Boom. Agreed. All right. How did it control, Jay? Baby. Con- uh, you know what? 
Uh, the what I, I have one minor gripe with it, and that is sometimes you get a little too into like the jumping and whatnot, or the or the swinging or the uh, electrified rail things, and then you just overshoot whatever the fuck you're aiming at. And it's it's the, it's just a problem with first person platformers where you can't really see where your uh, feet or like a shadow where you're landing. Uh, because you, you, mm -hmm. it's a little, it's a little iffy where or when you're going to land. Um, but other than that, I mean, I, I played a little bit with the Steam controller. Uh, the first person view doesn't really work with this sort of game because you need to, you need to move the camera around a lot, especially when you're uh, doing the hook shot sequences. Um, and, uh, with keyboard and mouse, it caused me extreme pain, but that's due to an entirely different issue. Hmm. What, what, what about what about you pedro what do you think uh well it's a first person running slash platforming game uh it works with the mouse and keyboard the it's another it was the thing that this game does really well that a lot of unity games seem to cock up consistently which is mouse sensitivity mouse sensitivity slider on this one works and it's actually very very accurate so kudos to them for that and some of the set pieces, uh, you're usually running a little too fast to actually pay attention to them, or if you're running a little too slow, well, the set piece is going to be over by the time you get there. So I would like a little bit of a uh, halfway point in between the two, not enough to dig in a chair, but absolutely would like a little bit more granular control over the speed of what you're doing, not just, you know, stupidly fast in human speed or just the casual jog mm. uh this is something i thought would be fun to actually sit back and play with so i, I whipped out the uh, punishment device strider got for me the steam controller <laughs> thinking all right I thought you're talking about the writing crop anyway so i broke out the steam controller and <laughs> it seemed like it'd be a nice fit for this unfortunately for whatever reason the right areola there, there was just some jank with the camera movement it was like slight pause hesitation it's like what the fuck's going on here enough to where it's like this better not be an issue with the damn game when i break out the gerbil grab the gerbil no problem whatsoever so i played it like that and it worked as expected everything logically laid out i, I never had to you know that's something you know you got right when you don't have to hit escape and it's like all right what fucking does what then this game's like hey, it's your basic shit there's nothing cray cray in here to deal with. And I don't think any of us had any problems with any controls. I'm not going to dig it for the steam controller because, you know, Pedro, you got a point, man. It's probably not really Best meant for this. Game. I just, hey, man, the steam controller is supposed to handle shit like this, though. So I'm not, I can't blame the, <laughs> can't, well, that's the purpose of the damn thing. Think about it. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm right. So you can do that. Make that noise all you want. It's turning me on. Keep going. Um, I'm going to say four <laughs> chairs all the way down, all the way down. Yep. Seems legit. Four chairs for control. And finally, fun. Pedro, you get your spiel out first. Why don't you? Okay. It is a, it is a uh, teeny tiny spiel because there is just one reason I can't give this game four chairs for the fun. And well, it's the big elephant in this particular room, which is the fact that the game is short criminally short i was having fun i was having a lot of fun and stupid monkey game took my fun away from me it i finished it in about two hours and 16 minutes that's the playtime my save file says and it, it took my fun away from me but in all seriousness i guess i um i have to actually do a little breakdown and get a little bit more technical like i'm off to do uh Everyone takes movement for granted when it comes to a video game. These guys said, you know what? We're going to take movement. We're going to quadruple down on it. And we're going to explore exactly uh, what video game, video game movement can do to improve or, you know, a cha completely change the experience of a video game. And they freaking nailed it. Uh, I've... Probably, no, I can safely say that I've never had so much fun just running and jumping down a corridor for five minutes in the way I did in Valley. It's 
this game is the perfect example of aesthetics and narrative being used solely to further the mechanics or mechanic singular since there's only the one but they did it really well they did it goddamn well if it had come out this year i'd say blitix got uh contestant easily but it's not so yeah <laughs> jordan I was going to pass it off to you, actually. Too late. But, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, but, but here's the thing. 21 wet, stinky maple bucks this is a bit of a big ass for this jolly little jaunt. Uh, the game itself is actually pretty shallow because it, ha- it has this platforming, platforming mechanics. Uh, it gives you uh, occasional the occasional new tool at a given level to overcome that level's specific obstacle, be it the hook shot or the magnetic boots or the double jump. Or finally, the thing that lets you run across water and like supercharge your jump. Um, yeah, the Jesus module. Then it's then then mm-hmm. then it's kind of <laughs> never used. It's not really brought up again, except for one or two points. Um, one thing I did kind of like is uh, later on in the game, they do give you some options as to how you want to specifically tackle a couple of the movement issues mm-hmm. or the movement problems, which is nice. Um, and and but honestly, the execution is pretty spot on. Like uh, what? So I, I can I can sort of forgive the shallow mechanics, um, and the story is pretty decent too. Um, I'm more of a fan of emergent narratives as opposed to the kind of stuff that is spoon fed to you, like in this game. But at the same time, again, the right the writing is pretty decent. It's well executed, so I can't fault it for that. The story is a bit of like a who done it. Uh, mystery of let's explore what's going on here except there's not really a lot of discovery it's just people telling you what happened as you uh, progress through the levels um the, the the crashes really really hurt my fun in this game uh it the uh, both the three swipe crashes i had uh basically tacked on another hour to the gameplay i finished it in uh four hours um probably probably would have been less if i didn't have to redo a bunch of stuff that said, um, for five bucks, this is this is a pretty fun game. Um, it's well it's well done. It has an engaging story. Um, that's that's pretty much all I can say about it. Uh, it gets a solid three chairs out of me for fun. What about you, Ben? Okay, the five bucks, something we need to touch on. It's like, why are you reviewing such an old game? Let me tell you, Brad. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, it was five bucks on bundle from some bundled place. I just bought it for myself. I was like, oh, yeah, I remember wanting to fuck around with this game. Didn't want to fuck around with it for 20 bucks. And um, I played it five. And I was like, okay, pretty good. It was really short. But I was like, I, I spent $5 for it. That was an enjoyable romp, which it was. However, if I had paid that iron price, currently at nineteen ninety nine, what stinky cash is, I'd been a little bit angry. Maybe, maybe not angry, bit miffed. Now, the good you know, the storytelling, world building, clearly something these motherfuckers know how to do. Okay. I enjoyed the ride all the way through. And um, I honestly thought that they were going to pull like some gotcha right up until I jumped out of the tube at the end. I'm not going to spoil anything. If you want to see that, watch my accident. Watch me accidentally beat the game. That's on YouTube. Uh, I Up until that point, I was all like, you know what? They want me to think the game's almost over. Then, but it's not really. There it pulls like, oh, no, here's the rest of the game. And there's like another two or three hours. The game was over. And, uh, you know, I vend my way through it in four hours. Vinway's like the opposite of the wrong way where you just go straight ahead and all the shit that's there to distract you is like, hey, go collect these things. Fuck these things. I got to get to the exit. You know, I'm going to finish the game in four hours. Rick, whatever. I liked it. Um if you can pick it up on sale, you see this thing, I'd say even half off. Okay. Let's say 10 wet stinky caches. Just just keep in mind, in, unless you're a collection monkey, like, or just straight up collect, mm-hmm. you know, coll- collectual maniac. I want to combine two words, but my brain's not letting me because I'm really tired. Um, pick it up. Uh, five, absolutely worth four hours of my time. 20 bucks? Uh uh-uh. uh. Uh, I, I wish there was more. It's, I enjoyed the world. I uh, really dug it. So, yeah. Yeah, and uh, honestly, even for 10 bucks, you get more value than like the extended edition of Return of the King because at least you're not bored throughout the entire thing. So I think uh, I think all in all, <laughs> that gets three chairs for the fun. 
mm-hmm. um and mm-hmm. uh f- finally tell lead that all up Valley gets a solid three chairs so you got anything you want to add on any any leftover bits before we go to the hate mail i think we're good man no, yeah, uh, the 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 one thing I think you can do though is if you if after you beat the game, if you do want to go back and do all the collecty things, you can, and you can even like sort of go back and forth yep. in between levels with your newfound power ups and maybe access areas that you previously weren't able to do. I know there was there was one area I was like one medallion short, and I'm like, God damn, I don't feel like going and collecting that one last medallion. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, that's that's definitely a thing. So coming up next. Uh, something about a shirt I wear? I don't know. Maybe, maybe I should just get naked. Boys and gentlemen, ladies and girls, it's that time that we are so very tired because this was a long one. <laughs> this is a really long show. You look down at that timer ticking down if you're watching us on YouTube. This... This took us a while, and I'm done waffling now. This is the end of the show. It's when you get to shout in our direction. So if you'd like to do that, go to LinuxGameCast.com, hit the contact button, make sure LGC Weekly is the thing that's on the little drop downy box. If you'd like to send Jordan some uh, questions for relationship advice, you can do that. If you'd like to send some feedback for that LWDW show we do on Wednesdays, you can do that too. It's all really nice, really simple. Fill out the forum. And if you're a game developer, make sure to include some keys or a build that we can share amongst us so that we may all play your game. Mm -hmm. So this week, what do we have? Coming up first, man, uh, all the way back to Halloween, we had a giveaway and apparently Mm -hmm. nobody was interested in getting a copy of uh, Layers of Doors, which we had extra yes. copies of <laughs> um but you know competitions remain open until all things are claimed and jolly well i should explain what a competition was it was tell us your best windows horror story which we kind of figured would be easy because mm-hmm. it's like ah i had to use it one time it was terrifying jolly man writes in he left a comment on the patron he talks about uh mm-hmm. just straight up unadulterated nightmare fuel so, uh, I mean, oh, yeah. l- listen, we're talking option A, option B, option C. All this would be in the show notes. Um, what's the gist of it? He's got Lettix, new partition. He's got access to his files again. Nevertheless, they had to reformat the thing, get back. Dual booting doesn't count when Windows can't boot, right? Yeah, right. So, <laughs> you, sir, have been sent your copy of Layers of Doors. Um, thank you for that which i think there's like two more keys laying around if anyone wants to dig up that post it'll be terrible yes. to find it so apparently we were also talking about consoles or something at some point something all right this, this is from matthew raw other other matthew lance he says i just bought a console x bone shithole and wow it sucks i think that any tech new would have a better experience on a steam box rather than on an xbox stuff thingy an example I have a console and a plastic disc thingy for Forza. 46 gigs of forced update to download just to launch the game, plus my not live limited bandwidth is eaten by all the NSA talk my newfound gaming box does. For people asking why the, why the fuck, I bought it as a cheap 4K HDR Blu-ray player as a movie lover, owner of a good home cinema setup. So yeah, gaming is far from a priority. I was just tasting the shit. Yeah, well, welcome, welcome to console life. Though to be fair, and under under Games for Windows Live, this was the thing I remember. I there was a there was a um, a, a sale for the first Batman game, Arkham Asylum, that you could pick it up for like a buck. So I got it, I installed it, and I needed to install an update through Games on Windows Live, and then I needed to install another update for <laughs> Games for Windows Live, and another, and another, and another, and by the time I could get to the game, I just didn't care anymore. That said, though, once uh, once the Pokemon Switch thing comes out, I'm I'm cave and buy one. That's just that's just what it is. Um, so console exclusives are gonna exclusive. Here's the thing with consoles. With me, I tapped out on the consoles with the Sega 32X. I got fucked. 
that's my story. I, I, I was, yeah, had my PC then. It was the next week that I had my first Voodoo One 3DFX card, and shit got real. Well, uh, I do have this. <laughs> it's an Xbox 360. It's probably going to uh, be heavily modded and carved from the inside out to maybe in time. This is my long-term project. Uh, if you were watching at the start of the show, you know, uh, my long-term project, probably going to build a steam machine out of that. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Why? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why not? I mean, science look, isn't look, about why. Look at him. Does he have anything better not? else to do with his life? <laughs> not uh, <laughs> fair point. Plenty of things. <laughs> we, uh, yeah, but those are things you should be doing, Pedro. And <laughs> yes, <laughs> so, so naturally you've latched onto this Xbox thing to keep you away from them. <laughs> <laughs> yes Listen, it, it's it's i it's don't want to fight my demons <laughs> <laughs> procrastinator yeah procrastinator definitely yeah. holy fuck <laughs> you know what <laughs> that, that's an open in question because we fucking didn't learn anything this week uh we learned this is a long <laughs> no. issue we had a lot of stuff to cover. We hope you enjoyed it. And if you dug it uh, and you want to scream back in any of our directions, you can get a hold of me down there at Vinstone on Twitter. Plus Vinstone on Google Plus because I forgot to cue the music. Hang on. I'm not going to cut this back in, but cue the music now. Go. M music cued. Um, Jordan Swung, I'm going to be wrapping myself in silk and creating a chrysalis so that I may emerge as a beautiful Australian next week. But until then, you can find me at the Bernie Pool on Twitter, plus Jordan Spung on Google+. It'll be amazing. You will actually have less hair. <laughs> well, I am most definitely a Trent Reznor song. Sometimes I go on for very long, and I'm done with that. I'm Pedro Mateos. You can find me at Unaccounted for on Twitter or plus Pedro Mateos on Google+. <laughs> All right, just one thing left to do. Um, if you're watching visually... Because it's time to give you the credits. Credits! Oh, oh man, speaking speaking of which, new new Star Wars this week. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you gotta go see it the day of, or it's gonna be um like dodging fucking spoilers, <laughs> Neo Dodge bullets. I don't know, because I'm not I'm not sure how crowded there's so there are two cinemas in in Helsinki, only two. So I don't know how crazy busy it's going to be. Um, and I, I, I don't know. I, I kind of... I'm, 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 I'm probably going to end up ducking spoilers at least for like a week. <laughs> oh, you're fucked then because I'm, I'm texting you shit second. <laughs> I, as soon as I'm walking out of the damn theater. <laughs> good, good, good stuff. Her blocked. I got more than one number. Curb locked. <laughs> Listen, I, I'm 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 just waiting to find out that once and for all, Nien Num is, or no, it's a salacious crumb is the true villain behind everything. Five dudes. <laughs>